I, Viserys Targaryen, do hereby name Rhaenyra Targaryen, heir to the Iron Throne. The Targaryens are the sort of fascinating dynasty that we don't really know much about from the original books because at that point, they've all died out. I don't even know where I first mentioned the idea of a Targaryen civil war called the Dance with the Dragons. But Ryan and Miguel and I have been working together and it's exciting. Well, as any great tale out of George's world, it's about a power struggle for the throne. But the unique one about this one is that instead of it being one family fighting another family, like Lannisters fighting the Starks, this story is about the Targaryens fighting themselves. We were 200 years in the past, but we were at the height of the Targaryen Empire, which was a time of decadence. And by definition, the height of an empire usually means the height of its technology, the height of its hubris. We had to show this idea that this was an opulent and decadent group of people, no war for 60 years. I mean, they're a happy bunch. And everybody knew that if you messed with the Targaryens, you would get the dragons, so nobody dared to overthrow them. I, Lord Hobart Hightower, promise to be faithful to King Viserys. It took a lot of doing, but we were able to put together a hell of a cast. We're looking for very specific people, so the very first person we wanted was Paddy Considine. I think Viserys struggles with being the king. Viserys feels a duty to keep peace amongst the kingdoms. Being king is a very difficult seat to be in. Viserys has an awareness of just how dangerous it is to sit on the Iron Throne. Targaryen must understand this to be king or queen. Rhaenyra is strong-minded. She's smart. I think she's underestimated. You have dragon rights, father. She realizes that the women within the kingdom spend their entire lives serving. She wrestles with it. She doesn't like it. She doesn't agree with it. Brother? Damon. Damon has a great affiliation and love and admiration for his brother, the king. But Damon's all swords and knives, really. I do think on some level he wants to cause chaos. I think he's interested in chaos. I think he survives in chaos quite well. Three, two, one, action! He's got a very, quite clear moral compass. And you're either in it or you're out of it. It's named King's Landing because that's where Aegon the Conqueror, Aegon the Dragon, landed with his ships and uh, when he decided to begin the conquest of Westeros. And they built the Red Keep, which became the center of King's Landing and the place of the uh, Targaryens and the Iron Throne. In the original books, George always described the throne as being made from thousands of swords. I wanted to make a hybrid version that it was closer to something that's described in the original book that still honored the throne from the original series. It's a kind of a throne that says a statement. Look at, look at my power. These are treasures of people I have killed or conquered. Cameras are running. When I walked into the throne room for the first time, there was a sort of moment that I had of like, oh wow, I'm on the Iron Throne. For me, it's really this particular period in Westeros. It was a time of high decadence and peace and prosperity. So you get to see what the realm looks like before it descends into the post-decadence of war that you see in the original series. Welcome back, everyone. This will be my new House of the Dragon trailer video. There's a whole bunch of new footage, a bunch of Easter eggs, so we'll break it all down. I'll be doing videos for all the episodes when it starts in a couple weeks. Be sure to subscribe to get them all. I'll also do a special House of the Dragon giveaway during those videos, too. They started the trailer with the current king, Viserys Targaryen, naming his daughter Rhaenyra the heir to the Iron Throne. This is a little bit earlier in the timeline. It is happening during the events of episode one. Some of the trailer footage takes place from later episodes, but like this big tournament that they have that they show you later is also in episode one. It's basically a tournament to celebrate the birth of Viserys' new son that he thinks is going to be born. It sort of helps set up some of the stakes during the series and why there's this giant Targaryen civil war where the family is battling over who's going to actually succeed to the Iron Throne. Because when the series begins, Viserys does have a wife. She is pregnant with a male child, but he has no living male heir. So everybody's wondering who his successor is going to be. And he refuses to name either his brother, Daemon Targaryen, played by Matt Smith, or his daughter. But that's like the two big questions. People are wondering, well, they both have real strong claims. Who should we support? There's a bunch of trailer footage that kind of shows you more of Daemon's skills with weapons. Like he is a skilled fighter, but he's not the best fighter in Westeros. 
One of the big fights that he has during the tournament here is against Kristen Cole. You actually see him being named to the Kingsguard later in the trailer here where he's bowing down wearing the Kingsguard's armor. Graham McTavish is playing Harold Westerling. He's the current Lord's Commander of the Kingsguard. The reason why their armor looks different than the Kingsguard's armor during the main show in Game of Thrones is because each time there's a regime change in Westeros, like somebody new takes the Iron Throne, they always wind up changing the Kingsguard's armor to suit themselves. But the big idea during this tournament is that it's Daemon Targaryen wearing this dragon scale looking armor, like this really cool looking armor. It looks way better in the actual episode than it does in the trailers. So you kind of get that vibe from him during the events of the series where he kind of has this swagger about him like, yes, I I am the next king of the realm. Bit of a rug pull during the episode too, because one of the things about his character, and you kind of get this when Matt Smith is talking about the nature of his character during the trailer, he's very mercurial, he thrives in chaos, that makes you think of Littlefinger in his chaos is a ladder speech. He's not totally like Littlefinger, he just likes the more biblical era of the old school Targaryen family, and that's what he wants to do, like he wants to take the Iron Throne and take them back to what they used to be during the era of Aegon's conquest. Because when the series begins, they're basically at the tail end of this very, very long era of prosperity. It's kind of like on the main show Game of Thrones when they make all the jokes about the sweet summer children of the Starks. Like old Nan is telling them the tales, you sweet summer children, you know nothing of winter. Because up to that point for like the past 16, 17 years or so, and after Robert's Rebellion, it's been this relatively quiet period of prosperity for the realm. So a lot of these kids grew up only knowing peace. The previous king before Viserys I was Jaehaerys I, Jaehaerys the Wise. He reigned for almost over 50 years, and it was a relative period of prosperity in the realm. So there's this real vibe that people have gotten, gotten fat and lazy by the time that current events on the show pick up. Like the Targaryen family has been so powerful for so long, they have so many dragons, they're like at the height of their power. Matt Smith's Daemon Targaryen character feels like they've kind of gotten fat and lazy, and wants to take them back to this more hardcore era like what it was during Aegon's conquest. They talk a little bit about Aegon the Conqueror during this trailer too, about how he basically built King's Landing. It's called King's Landing because that's the site of where he made landfall in the Seven Kingdoms when he declared war on all the Seven Kingdoms, trying to unite the realm. Technically he didn't conquer Dorne, so it was like the Six Kingdoms and Dorne. It wasn't until like a much later Targaryen king wound up convincing Dorne to join the rest of the realm, but they didn't actually conquer Dorne. Like later in the timeline, they just agreed to join the other six realms. But when the series picks up, a lot of people view Paddy Considine's Viserys Targaryen character as a relatively weak king because he's trying to hold everything together, but the Targaryens are kind of resting on their laurels at this point in history, and he refuses to name an official heir, which just drives the small council crazy. Speaking of resting on their laurels too, there are a couple scenes here where you see Millie Alcock's young version of Rhaenyra in the small council meetings with her father Viserys and the rest of the council members here. When she says, Father, you have dragon riders, that's actually in response to the threat of Crab Feeder and the Triarchy. You see all these battle scenes taking place in the Stepstones. That's happening later in the series, but when she's talking about the dragon riders here, she's suggesting that they use them to take care of the threat of Crab Feeder early on before he actually comes to invade Westeros. And the whole idea is that he doesn't really think that it's that big of a deal. Like, we shouldn't worry about that, which just kind of flows with the whole idea of Daemon Targaryen wanting to take the family back to a more militaristic period in their history. Like, we should be conquerors. We shouldn't just be sitting around resting on our laurels. Which also reminds you of kind of what happened to Daenerys Targaryen when she started to show the Targaryen madness and wanted to conquer the rest of the world. That's what a lot of the other small council members are worried about if he were to name Daemon Targaryen his official heir. So there are people in the realm that support his claim to the Iron Throne, but there are a lot of people that don't want him to be king because they think that he'll be more of a tyrant. The way George R. R. Martin describes the character of Daemon Targaryen is that he is both the most beloved character in the realm and the most hated character in the realm. Like he's always doing things to get himself in trouble with his brother, the king. You'll see some of that play out during episode one. Like you'll find out why it is that it's his daughter that's being named the heir to the Iron Throne and not Daemon Targaryen, his brother. It's also in the books too, so if you haven't read the books, it's all from Fire and Blood. That's basically like George R. R. Martin's version of the Silmarillion, like it's more of a history text about the history of their family. The new character that we meet in the trailer is also Hobart Hightower here. He's the current Lord Hightower ruling over their family's territory in Old Town. He's the older brother of Otto Hightower, who's Hand of the King, and he's the father of Alicent Hightower, who becomes the King's second wife. There were high towers during the events of Game of Thrones in the main series later in the timeline. It's just that the show kind of cut them out of the story. It's the same thing with the Valerians too. Like they were still around later in the timeline. It's just that when Robert Baratheon took the Iron Throne after Robert's Rebellion, he diminished their role in the Iron Realm because they've been supporters of the Targaryen family for so long. 
One of the other really cool new scenes that you see in the trailer too, and this is from later episodes, this isn't part of episode one, is a young version of Rhaenyra heating up a new dragon egg and preparing to hatch it. Like this is the cat's paws of Valyrian dagger that she's getting ready to grab here in the fire. It's the same dagger that Littlefinger eventually wound up putting in the hands of Joffrey, just sort of part of his machinations, to eventually start the War of the Five Kings. It's also the same dagger that Arya used to kill the Night King. They made the hilt a little bit more elaborate, but it's made of dragon bone. You'll find that because it's meant to be the height of Targaryen power in Westeros, there are just so many dragon-related things, like dragon-related items, just all over the place. The Iron Throne itself is meant to be made of thousands of swords of all the people who bent the knee to Aegon the Conqueror when he was conquering the Six Kingdoms in Dorne. He had Balerion the Black Dread melt all the swords down with his dragon fire, and then they basically turned them into the Iron Throne. That's why they all look very melty. The reason why you don't see all the extra swords later in the timeline during the events of the main series is because when Jaime Lannister killed the Mad King and Robert Baratheon was successful in Robert's rebellion took the Iron Throne is that he tried to remove as much Targaryen stuff as he could from the Red Keep. That's why he moved all the dragon skulls down below the throne room. All the wedding scenes like where everybody's in the throne room dancing, that's all from Rhaenyra's first marriage. It doesn't happen during episode one, but I'm not sure exactly which episode they're going to do that in. The whole idea with episode one is just sort of reintroducing you to Westeros during this time period, like what's different about it during the height of Targaryen power, introducing you to all the main characters, and sort of setting up the stakes for the season. The other funny thing that I haven't talked about before either is the giant model of Dragonstone that's inside Viserys the First Chambers. So if you wonder what this giant model of Dragonstone is, this is like an actual model that Viserys the First is carving out slowly inside his bedchambers. There's a lot of Easter eggs and references to parts from these scenes that reference things in real life, just Game of Thrones lore. So I'll talk about that more when episode one drops. I don't want to talk about too many spoilers right now. But there's a whole bunch of other trailers that have been dropping recently. I will eventually try to do videos for all of them. There's like a bunch of new footage to talk about. My full episode one video will release after they actually drop the episode officially. That'll be in a couple weeks. So if you have any questions or any bonus videos that you want me to do for the series, just write them in the comments below. Everyone click here for my House of the Dragon episode 1 review video and click here for my new She-Hulk Daredevil trailer video. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.